look at Mech Earth 2050. It may seem hard to believe, but this vehicle has as much room as the Apollo Lunar Module. It kept three guys alive for days. Think about that. Three people in a room this big, in an airless environment, a quarter million miles from home. That's just another example of how human beings have adapted to the changes that this universe has thrown at us. Decades ago, NASA's moonwalkers were able to spend only short amounts of time on the lunar surface. Now, young explorers say they expect colonies on the moon within the next decade. The moon is our nearest neighbor and the, the closest place to start to learn to live off the land and start to learn how to use the resources from another extraterrestrial body for people back here on Earth. That quest is now going beyond even the moon. By 2030, NASA wants to have human beings living 140 million miles from Earth. They're making plans right now to go to Mars. That journey has taken on a new dimension now that NASA has announced that they've found liquid water on the Martian surface. As humans, we've done this since the beginning of time. Part of the human spirit is that curiosity, that need to explore, that is within us. So what would it be like to live on Mars? There's no breathable air. Temperatures can plummet to 200 degrees below zero. There are killer levels of radiation. And there are dust storms that last for months. Human beings are adaptable, but the red planet might be our toughest challenge yet. To meet that challenge, enterprising explorers of the future have developed a practice environment. They've tried to create Mars right here on Earth. When I first turned off this direction, I was just amazed. The, the colors, the, the view of it all, the massiveness of everything, it, it, it looked like Mars to me. And it was just, it, was just, it, it caught me awestruck. It was great. It's called the Mars Desert Research Station. And though it looks like the set of a science fiction movie, it's located in the Utah desert, just four hours from Salt Lake City. This area is largely uninhabited. It's rocky, it's hot, there's very little water, and in its own way, it's beautiful. You have to come to it. Uh, words don't really describe it fully. Uh, it's a huge, unique uh, experience. These explorers live in what's known as the Mars Lander Habitat, a building they call the Hab. It's a two-story cylinder that measures about 30 feet in diameter. The habitat is this really cool place. It's exactly how you imagine a little space house. It's very functional. It's very cool. It kind of looks like a tuna can. Crews of up to six people live in the hab for two week stretches. There's not much room, but that's a problem explorers would face if they were actually living on Mars. It's different. There's an adjustment period. Uh, you're sharing a space with small, very small space with five other people. The psychological aspect has been, it's been tough, but the habitat is my world. The habitat is home. We, we have to adapt to an environment we never thought we'd find ourselves living in and working with people that we might not know that well to begin with. To simulate the deadly environment on Mars, all sorts of precautions have to be taken. There's simulated airlocks on the HAB. No one leaves the HAB without following proper safety procedures. When crew members do leave the HAB, they wear spacesuits designed to simulate what they'd wear if they were really working in the cold, airless environment of Mars. The spacesuits are really tough to work in, but it's, it's part of the simulation, and it's there to, to help us realize how hard it's going to be on Mars. The suit is a, a unique challenge, uh, but it's also the hugest benefit. Uh, without that, we're walking around without. We're just in regular clothes. Crew members spend hours getting samples from this simulated Martian surface. If they need to search a little further, they gear up for what's called an extravehicular activity, or EVA. This means hopping on a four-wheeler, actually an all-terrain vehicle, the Earth version of a manned Mars rover. I discover new things every time that I ride around the area, and we plan different EVAs to look for certain samples or look for certain things, but just in the most unexpected places, you find something that so beautiful and so unexpected. Even the production of food is taken care of in this simulated Martian environment. Next to the hab is a small greenhouse where crew members grow their own vegetables. 
just like they'd do if they were really on Mars. The green hab is important because we're going to need food, but it's also important in a psychological aspect. When you're out on Mars, there's nothing that's, that's earthly. There's nothing that feels like home. And when you go into that, that green hab, you start to see greenery and you start to see you know, the colors that, that make humans happy. The human race is just used to. While designers of the research station have tried to think of everything, even they admit it's impossible to completely prepare for an unknown environment like Mars. But if practice makes perfect, then this piece of Utah desert will ensure tomorrow's space explorers will be ready when it's time to live on the red planet. Mars is the next place. If we don't go to Mars, we're not going to go any further. Up next on Earth 2050, a new invention helps people adapt after Mother Nature strikes. We've been helping the local homeless community and even disaster victims all over the world.